Theology. Theology. Unplugged. Hey friends, welcome to Theology Unplugged. I'm Michael Patton and it is Friday. So we're doing a little bit different thing. You know, usually I take people's questions, but I thought I wanted to deal with something that is on, you know, there's new things that come out. I usually don't strike them whenever they're hot. I'm not very good at that. I probably never will be, but every once in a while I do, especially whenever it piques my interest. And I've got two things that pique my interest quite a bit. Politics, I don't talk about much, but it it does pique my interest. So I know a lot of political pundits, and I I keep up pretty well, you know, across the board with stuff. Um, Normally, especially around this time, I just kind of stay away from saying too much about it. Uh, I'm sure you understand why, but probably not hard to guess where I stand on things. However, having said that, I thought it was very, very interesting, something that came out recently. Tucker Carlson, who used to be on um, Fox News, uh, and maybe, what was it, six months ago, a year ago? I'm not sure how long ago it was, but he got fired from Fox News and started his own podcast. So he does, uh, I think it's... I forget what it's called, the Tucker Carlson Show or Tucker Network or something like that, but you can find it on YouTube, you can find it on um, X, but this wasn't even from his network, it was from something called Christianities dot, or Christianities Movie, plural, Christianities Movie dot com, and I could not believe what I saw, is it, well, let me, let me take that back, it's not that I couldn't believe what I saw, because I think... In in some ways, those who of us who watch Tucker have seen this weird shift in the last couple of years. And this shift has been really great from the standpoint of Christianity and and you know, our love for the Lord. One of the things I used to talk about with my sister is how Tucker he was really, really good on doing stuff because he what he was fearless. In so many ways. And I, I liked that. And I liked him talking about things that most people won't talk about. It's just, I like that kind of stuff. But he, um, he, he, he didn't seem to be a Christian like some of the others that I watch. A lot of people are very expressive of their faith, quoting scripture, using the scripture constantly. Tucker has always been an advocate for religion, and it seems like he has genuinely liked Christianity as being a part of America because he likes the values it brings. However, I and I've told you guys this before, I can usually tell when somebody's a Christian. I can't tell when they're not, but whenever they are, there's certain things that come out that I recognize. And, you know, I think we all should be able to do that in some way, and we probably all recognize different aspects, but we are his sheep. He recognizes the voice of the sheep, and I think many times the sheep recognize the voices of other sheep. I'm sure you could get I'm sure I don't have much to do to convince you of that. But anyway, so I started recognizing, hey, this guy, he, he, he's good, but he, he's not a sheep. I don't think he's a Christian. I, like I said, I'm not sure whether he wasn't, but it didn't seem like he was. So, but all of a sudden, things started to change, and it was kind of a weird change. He took a he took a turn from not just a spiritual standpoint, talking about spirituality and the importance of it, but man, he had a he had a uh, he just had thoughts of understanding that there was evil in the world. And I thought, well, he's just talking about these politicians and, uh, you know, as, as some people have been calling it recently, the enemy from within. And so there's people here that are evil. There are people in this world that are evil, and certainly there is. And certainly there's going to be an expression of that evil in what they do and what they think. But I've always wanted Tucker to become a Christian because I genuinely like the guy. I think he's a funny guy. He's, he's uh, you know, he, he's a comedian in so many ways. Uh, but... I didn't think he was a Christian, but all of a sudden started to change and he started talking about the Bible and he started showing up at Christian conferences. Every time he would, he would talk about evil and the presence of evil and recognizing evil and how evil itself is a contrast for good and therefore 
from the sta- this standpoint, it's the moral argument for the existence of God, but basically, and therefore there must be an ultimate good because he, he says, I have seen ultimate evil. I see ultimate evil all the time. And therefore there is an ultimate good. And then suddenly it's more and more talk about the scripture. Sometimes, I mean, recently, even talking about how he's read through the entire Bible recently in the last year. I'm like, well, okay, well, this guy, you know, he's come around. God got a hold of him. How did God get a hold of him? I want to hear his testimony. I want to hear what happened. Has he always had a hold of him? And it just suddenly, um, he finally started realizing, I need to talk about this more. Didn't know. But all of a sudden, I got a video that we're going to watch, and I'm going to comment on because it's a fascinating video from Christianities.com, uh, Christianitiesmovie.com, and this shows his testimony in a short way. So let me let me go to that. I think the presence of evil is kickstarting people to wonder about the good. That's what happened to me. That's what happened to you? Oh yeah, I had a direct uh, experience with it. In the milieu of journalism or just? Nope, in my bed so at night. Now this guy that's talking to him, he's a, I believe he's an Orthodox Christian. And I believe what he's doing is he's making a movie about how many different Christianities there are out there in the world. I think it might have a positive use. I'm not sure. I haven't seen the movie, but that this guy is listening to Tucker and he's going, are you kidding? I mean, are you serious? You, you, what, tell me about your experience. And I think this is probably the first time Tucker has said it publicly. So, and I got attacked while I was asleep with my wife and four dogs in the bed and mauled, <laughs> physically mauled. Um, in a spiritual attack by a demon? Yeah, by a demon. <laughs> I mean, he didn't even, he did not even hesitate that. Now, you guys know me, okay? I am, I'm both a skeptic and I believe in this stuff at the same time. I'm a wannabe, but I can't be. And that's what I'm talking about when we talk about charismatic. Now, I usually talk about charismatic in the theological sense, meaning the continuation of the supernatural sign gifts. In this case, we're talking about Tucker being a bit charismatic in a different way, and sometimes they're connected. But this is just kind of seeing and and attributing so much to the background forces of evil and good that are going on in the background, which I think we all should be. Now, I'm not saying we know what to do with that. I'm not saying we know how to handle that because I don't think the Bible gives us a whole lot other than the armor of God and the shield of faith. No matter what it comes down to, no matter what attack you're in, you pull up the shield of faith, and that's what you can do. We have that, and it's a powerful force. We may not understand what's going on and the the crazy things, but we believe in spiritual forces of darkness. We believe in kingdoms and principalities, and that is what our battle is against. And so we all should be charismatic in this sense. Now, Tucker seems to have had a experience while he was in bed where he says, and I'm just saying this, he says he got attacked by a demon physically or by something unseen that left. Is that right? Uh, claw marks on my sides, on my... So it left physical mark. Oh, they're still there. Yeah, yeah. A year and a half ago. Was your wife terrified? I know you were. I wasn't. I was totally confused. I woke up and I just couldn't breathe and I thought I was going to suffocate and I walked around outside. And then I walked in and my wife and dogs had not woken up and they're very light sleepers. And then I had these terrible pains on my rib cage and on my shoulder and I was just in my boxer shorts and I went and flipped on the light in the bathroom and I had four claw marks on either side underneath my arms and on my left shoulder. And they're bleeding. Wait, they were, they were bleeding? They were bleeding, yeah. No, they were actual claw marks. And I sleep on my side, so I wasn't clawing myself. I don't have long nails. <laughs> um, and they didn't fit my hands anyway. But yeah, that happened. So I, I don't, I'm not from a world where things like that happen. I never heard of anything like that happening before. I, Okay, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not really from a world where things like that happen either. Just because you're a Christian doesn't necessarily mean you are. However, I think we need to be really, really careful with two things here. Number one, I don't know. Maybe he, was, maybe he 
he did scratch himself. He seems to be convinced that he could not have scratched himself the way that this scratches were. I wish he could tell me a little bit more about the scratches too, but he seems to be convinced of that. And he also um, says he doesn't have any nails. So maybe it's one of his dogs that did it. He said he was on the bed with his dogs. Um, but it's interesting because whatever it is that happened, look what this, tar- we'll, we'll talk about whether or not this happened. Because I know that's the first thing on our mind. I know the skeptics out there just, I mean, you can't, skepticism cannot deal with personal experience of someone else. There's nothing you can do. Even if I'm the skeptic, there's nothing I can say against your personal experience except for come up with my alternatives. But I did not have your experience, and so there's no way for me to understand the impact it had on you. And if somebody truly does have a personal experience where they encounter God, and I mean, I'm not saying it can't happen. Of course it can happen. My gosh, our God is the creator of the universe. He can intervene. He has intervened and he does intervene. So this can happen. We know it's not the norm. We call it miracles, not regulars. These things don't happen in the way that we would love them to happen. I would love to see them every day. I, like I've t- yes, told you guys a million times, I want to be a charismatic. There's nobody on earth that you'll ever meet that wants to be a charismatic more than me. Okay, I'm you know I'm just saying that. I'm sure there are. But at the same time, you guys know me. You know that I I talk about this a lot. I get around charismatics. I love it whenever they at least make a claim and I'm like, I'm praying for it to be right. I'm praying for a prophecy that they say to be true. I'm praying for a miracle. Whenever I, my mother was alive and I used to take her to the, to the, uh, to the charismatic churches in the wheelchair. And I didn't do that for the sake of trying to get her healed. I did it because I was genuinely trying to experience good charismatic churches that from people that I respected. And I was taking care of my mother at that time. But they would always come up there and say, can, can I pray for her? And I know they wanted to heal her so much because in the charismatic community, there's just kind of this pressure, this, not a pressure, that's, that's a bad word. That's a negative way to put it. There's this excitement that you truly do believe that God is working in miraculous ways. So you're trying to, you're trying to get your, your, you're trying to find your place in that atmosphere, in that theological atmosphere, in that spiritual life atmosphere. And so many times there were people who came up to her and said, I want to pray for her. I always wanted it to work. There's not one part of me who said, well, I don't want this to work because I don't want to change my theology. I don't know how much I would have changed my theology with this stuff. I mean, there's, there's a lot of conditions that come with being a theological charismatic. And I've told you guys this before, the three conditions, you have to believe that these miracles continued, these supernatural sign gifts, you have to believe that they're normative for the local church, not normative for the church, for the local church, every church, they are normative. They are supposed to be practiced in, and God wants to use them in every local church and you have to be one who personally pursues them by either praying for them yourself or going to a church to where you can engage with this type of community. Now, that's not what this is about. All I'm saying here is, you know how much I've wanted to be charismatic. I have tried. I'm still not. I am a skeptic towards it. However, having said all of that, this what Tucker is saying he is going through is not abnormal. Now, it's not, it's, I'm not saying, well, it's normal in the charismatic communities. People have stories like this all the time. Uh, yeah, they might, but it's not the charismatic communities. This is across cultures, across, across uh, denominations, across, even across religions. There are these kind of attacks that go on, and it, you, you may stay a skeptic, which, like I said, I'm skeptical about a lot of stuff, but I truly feel like I know how to engage with issues to, to know what is, what is responsible for me to believe, because my belief is precious to me. I don't just give it over to anybody. I don't just give it over because it fits my worldview, because I like it, because I want it to be true. I feel like I understand how to responsibly listen to somebody's story and either withhold belief or say, this guy's probably telling the truth or this story of this girl getting attacked by a demon is probably correct. Now I can't be sure about anything, 
I can't be sure about any people I know. I mean, you just learn how to trust people throughout your life. I feel like I know that. I feel like I'm responsible with it. And having said all that, this stuff that Tucker's talking about is not uncommon. And I feel like if you wanted to ask me, if you say, Michael, does this stuff happen? Yes, it does. There's, there's, not, there's not many many things that I would believe in the spiritual world more deeply than that there is a battle going on. And we can see glimpses of this battle. And that certain people, and I know this is going to sound weird, but you, you'd have to get into it. You have to, you have to research it. You have to see. It's not, it's not the Bible that limits our understanding. Some people say, well, if it's not in the Bible, I don't believe it. That's not true. That is simply not true in any single way. The Bible guards our beliefs. It, it gives us regulations. It points us in the right direction whenever it comes to the our, our salvation. It is a book very specific, and it does put buoys out. But sometimes those buoys are way out there, and they're like, this is what is going on. Whenever Paul talks about the spiritual battle, the battle against not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and evil forces of darkness in the heavenly realm, there's things going on. Okay, And I do believe that. I believe it because the Bible says it, but I also see across cultures across um uh time going all the way back through i got books over here on these types of encounters not even i got a lot of christian books that talk about these kind of encounters but i also have just books that are secular books they're trying to figure out what is going on and why these stories have been so pervasive for so long you either got to come up with this meta narrative where they're all wrong and everybody all of a sudden has the same kind of story but it's because their worldview forces them into this because it's a it's a crutch it's a it's a it's an opioid to make them feel better spiritually or be more responsible and say no something's happening something is happening i again i'm not saying whether or not this one is true because i think there can be an explanation with that dog i would like to ask him why could not the dog have done this to you and why do you not think it is a dream that was a very vivid dream. I've had dreams like that before. Maybe not anything that's changed my life. I mean, obviously, this thing's changed his life. He was not committed Christian. Something happened. Something happened to him. And you may say it's real or it's not real. It doesn't matter right now. What I'm talking about right now is something happened that changed his life. And it's changed it in every way that I can see for the better if you're going and you're reading your Bible, trying to understand scripture, trying to understand God, and you're starting to name the name Jesus, you're starting to say that more often rather than the generic God, something has happened. And if something has happened, the question is, what's behind that? Well, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I, that my, my worldview says God is behind it, period. It's not even a question of whether, well, maybe God stepped in here, but he, he, he didn't want this to happen. It has nothing to do with his will. No, I think everything falls within to the providence and the care and the will of God, whether it is the good or the bad, especially or particularly to those who are called to God's purpose, Christians. So I want to say all that and say, where I'm going to go. I, I, I've got to go in my mind. I, I'm a skeptic about these things, but it's not as if I don't think this is abnormal. This is something that happens. And these scratch marks are something that happens. I could show you video after video after video. And you could give me all the explanations of why every single one of those are wrong and we're, why they're all very similar, but they're wrong. Or you can say, hey, I think it fits within your worldview, and I think your worldview explains why all this is happening, and it's uncanny otherwise how similar all these stories are. Tucker says he got attacked by a demon while he was asleep, got scratched. The scratches were bleeding the next day. I had no idea what that was. I knew it was spiritual immediately. You did? Okay, that was going to be my question. Yeah. I, well, I don't understand to this you, day. I'm not going to put it you didn't. Part. You didn't try to refute the spiritual part in your own mind it went you went right into the well, it didn't make any sense and it doesn't now um so but i'm not from a what do they call it faith tradition okay. that um talks about things like that or even acknowledges their existence like there's nothing like that i think i've never heard background is anglicanism like that in my whole life 
What was the next day like? Well, the next morning I woke up and I thought that was the weirdest dream I've ever had. And then I saw blood on my sheets and I realized that was not a dream at all. So I called my assistant and was like the only evangelical Christian I know, you know, well enough to call with something bizarre like that, but totally bizarre <laughs> like that. And uh, she said, oh yeah, no, 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 that happens. Yeah, people are attacked in their bed by demons. What? <laughs> what are you even talking about? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I'm not leaving anything out and, um, and I'm not pretending to understand that. I can only say what happened to me and that did happen to me. And, uh, and then notice how he says this. I can only say what happened to me and that did happen to me. I mean, here's something that I don't think you're going to change this guy on because genuine experiences like this, they're, they're real. I, I'm not saying you interpret them correctly all the time, but once they're real, there's nothing you can do. There's no skeptic that can come in. I've told you this a million times in Introduction to Theology, in our Sources for Theology. Experience and emotions are more powerful than anything else. You may say, nah, they're not, Michael, not for me. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. And until you recognize that, they will keep their power over everything to such a significant degree that you have to bow to them and their automatic interpretation, whatever you believe they are. And then you start to look for them even in the smallest ways. And we got problems whenever we do that. Whenever God moves in your life, let me tell you something. If God is going to move, here's what you say. You say, listen, you have an experience like this, whatever it may be, or you hear the voice of God, whatever this kind of charismatic type experience is. You can back up and say, listen, God, I need confirmation. I need to make sure this is you because I respect and love you. And I don't want to just believe anything. He is not going to get angry. He's not going to say, what in the world? Why do you, why do you need more evidence? You should just have faith. But wait a minute, God, I could be believing the wrong thing, right? I mean, prophets do have false prophecy. God has never said anything like that. Not every anything like that. Whenever people seek confirmation, like Gideon, he never gets angry at him. As a matter of fact, I'm sure he says, good, this is the type of person we need. Gideon hears God. And he says, wait a minute, I'm not sure if it's you. Makes God do something else. And he says, I'm still not sure if it's you. Makes something, him do just the opposite of what he did. Moses, whenever Mo, God sends Moses to the Israelites, and he says, I'm going to send you to the people, your, uh, the, the Israelites. And, and in order for them to know it is me that sent you, here's what I want you to do. I want you to stick your hand on your side and become leprous. Stick it back in, and it's not. I want you to, I want you to throw your sta staff down on the ground. It's going to become a snake. Pick it back up, and it's not. And if they need it, I'll even turn water into blood. I mean, here, here's God saying, I will do whatever is needed. I make big footprints. I, whenever I intervene, I mean, I'm not saying God doesn't do it quietly, too. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying he doesn't move in our lives in very, very subtle ways, kind of the, the still small voice sometimes we talk about. And I think that's a, that's a great understanding. But what I'm talking about whenever he has interventions like this, these interventions are not the still small voice of God. These are something that come in our life, and they are significant. And I believe, like I said, I believe these types of things happen. And I also believe that they happen to certain people more often than others. You say, Michael, what is that? That, that doesn't make any sense. If everybody's Christian, we all should have. Why? Why should everybody have the same kind of experience with God? They're different people. They're different creations of God. They have different personalities. They have a different relationship. The structure of how they work with God is different than the way I work with God. Our commonality is Christ. That's how we get to God. But I'm a different person than you. It's just like my children, how they all have, I have a different relationship, very different with each one of my children. But I love them unconditionally, no matter what, each one of them. And I hope they always know that. But they're all, it's all different. Sometimes with one child, it's harder than with another. And then later it changes. It's just it's different periods of people's lives. And it's hard being a parent because of that. 
But God, God has the same thing. Why, why are why are all my kids different? Because that's the way God created them. Why do they experience life differently? Because that's the way God created them. Why are they interested in our relationships in different ways? Like, why does one child like to do this and another child like to do that and not like to do this? Because we're all different. I say all that because God created us all differently. And there are going to be some people who have more experience than other people. Now, call it what you will, will, but from what I have seen and studied, and like I said, I you wouldn't believe the enormous time I have put into this kind of stuff in the past 20, 30 years. Really, I do. Probably an irresponsible amount of time listening to people's testimony, trying to fit it within my theology, how it all networks and how to systematize it. And sometimes I just don't know, of course, but at the same time, here's the way I see things. I see everybody being different. I see certain people having some type, I don't know what you would call it, but maybe it's uh, sometimes, and this is kind of in weird circles, but God, I think they're close. They say there's a kind of a thinning of the veil for some people. In times in their lives, they will encounter things that suddenly open the door and then they're always encountering stuff. And sometimes it's very good, sometimes it's very bad. And some people that believe in it, like myself, have never encountered anything remotely similar. Similar, And I wouldn't mind, obviously, the good stuff, encountering the good stuff. Sometimes it'd be like, there's times in my life where I have doubted God and I say, hey, just bring me something, give me a demon to attack me. That would be great because at least at that point I would confirm my worldview. Nothing happens. Nothing has ever happened to me. And from Tucker's standpoint, it doesn't seem like anything had ever happened to him before. This was the first instance. Um, the, all of that to say this, that there are some people who engage in the spiritual world, uh, what do you say, more effectively? Um, just in a more, not, not the theological charismatic, although it could be, but it, more charismatically than others. And it's not because they choose to, it's because of who they are. And it's because that's how God has conversation with them. He allows them to see that thinning of the veil that he doesn't allow other people to see. Why? Just the way it is. I mean, who are you, oh man, to answer back to God the way he created things? We all have a wonderful opportunity for the relationship with God, however it takes part. We do not, we should not, we cannot get jealous of other people and how their relationship is. It's like one of my kids looking at the relationship of me and another one of my kids and getting jealous. Why can't we just be like that? Because we're different. I'm not saying I do perfect with them, but God does do perfect with us. And he loves us all unconditionally. And he deals with this all differently, even when you and I want something else to go on. Now, having said all that, let me deal with one question here that many of you may ask, because I got this from my sister. It's a really good question. And um, let, let me, let's me let go back to the video just for a minute and watch a little bit more of it, and then I'll finish up the com by commenting a more, few more things. Then I was seized with this very intense desire to read the Bible. Uh, which I then started without any study aids or anything. I bought a Bible that didn't have any. I, I'm not interested in editorializing in the Bible. I just want to read it and see what's in there myself. I have very low levels of trust for Christian pastors, most of whom, you know, I'm just not a fan Good. at all. Good. And uh, sorry to say that. But you start off that way. And so I just didn't, I don't want to hear other people's opinions. I just want to see what's in there. And I, so I spent a year and a half reading it, and then I started rereading it. And it was a, just a transformative experience for me, but I'm not you know, holding myself out as someone from whom you could get theological advice because I'm sure, not. Of course. I don't know. I don't understand any of it. But Do yeah, that happened. God allowed the demon? I have no idea what happened. All I know is I was dead asleep huh. with my wife and dogs and I woke huh. up with claw marks on my rib cage underneath my arms. And it didn't even make sense. My arms would I'm sorry, I don't mean to use this right now, but did you did you hear what he said? I don't know what happened. All I know as I woke up, and this is what I, I mean, it, it reminds me so much of, I believe it's John chapter 10, where the man is healed by Christ, and he's like trying to figure out how it happened. He says, I don't understand. All I know is this happened. 
and now I am who I am. And in Tucker's case, he says, I was dead asleep. <laughs> but but the, the first thing that came to my mind is he was dead in his trespass. All I know is I was dead and now I'm alive. And that seems to be the case of what happened. But anyway, whatever. I'm not, no one has to believe me. I don't care. But that happened to me. <laughs> And uh, so I just was like, wow, that that's real. Whatever that is, I don't even not sure what it is. It's but very real. And so then that presence of that evil yeah. Yeah. launches something. It definitely launched something. I mean, again, he's like, I just know this happened. I know it. And then also, where did this come from? I mean, that's this guy, he's sitting there, he's kind of confused. I can tell. I mean, he probably is as a most Orthodox Christian, should not be this way, but sometimes they very much are. They're standoffish, they back up, they go according to their tradition, their tradition doesn't allow for these types of things. Or it might, but only sporadically, and only in the tradition and the saints of the past. But here he is confronted with this, and I bet you he went home scratching his head, said, why would this happen? Okay, here we go. Let's ask this question. I, and I got this. I've got this over on my blog. If you want to, uh, if you want to check this out, this is on patreon.com, and I think I have it at credohouse.org as well, but patreon.com are for my, my members. By the way, you can become a patron and support right here by just clicking on that, taking a picture of it. I'd love to have your support to keep on doing what I'm doing. That's how I make it. Okay, so anyway, you go, oops, you go back over here to this blog, and uh, I wrote a blog called, Cut. I, I don't know what I'm going to call this, but the Tucker Carlson Demon, Why Would an Evil Spirit Do God's Will? I asked that question and go through it here because my sister asked me that. We got to talking about it because she loves Tucker as well. And we got to talking about this, and she said, why would an evil demon do this? And that's a, that's a good question. I mean, she said, May, maybe it was a, a good demon posing as a bad demon. And it, I think there's a, there's a wonderful illustration of this that shows not only the providence of God, but the reality of the spiritual warfare that is constantly going on behind the scenes in front of the throne of God and down here on earth. This is the reality. In 1 Kings chapter 22, there is a story where you find Ahab, and his downfall is looming. And in this story, you have, uh, let's see here, a rare glimpse into the divine council where spirits, including an evil one, including an evil one, are before God. And, and it's like all these angels, this divine council, and God's asking them, who will go down with me, go down and help me in my problem with Ahab? Isn't that interesting? I mean, him, here's God in heaven using the spiritual forces around him because that's the way he set it up. Of course, he doesn't need anybody, doesn't need anything, doesn't need you, doesn't need me. He, is, he has a say, he has a saity. That is, he is of himself. He is completely self-satisfied. He is completely fulfilled in and of himself. The reason why we are here, the reason why the spirits are here, the reason why everything is going the way it is because he's sharing of himself. He's sharing of his creativity. He's sharing of all of his attributes that have that can be shared, and he shares them with us and with his creation and says, now, go out there and be like me because it is fun. And so here's all these spirits. He's he, he's letting them, he's including them on what he's doing. So you got the divine council and um, you got uh, a spirit that steps up, an evil spirit that steps up and volunteers, says, hey, I'll, I'll go down and I'm going to deceive Ahab's prophets to lure him to go into war toward his downfall. And what God says... <laughs> God says, okay, go, go, go do it. That, that's, I've heard all your plans. I started to heard the good people, the good spirit ones, and the bad spirit ones, but I like this evil spirit's plan. And he says, go down there and do it. You're going to be successful. And that's what he does. This evil spirit, just a rare glimpse. First Kings 
chapter 22, a rare glimpse into the throne of heaven, what's going on behind the scenes. And here's the deal, because this spirit in this particular case, he's helping God out. This is, this is a guy that's in front of the throne of God, and he's evil. He's bad. He's not a good spirit. Not a bad spirit, not a not a good spirit posing as a bad spirit. He is a bad spirit. And here he goes and says, I've got a plan. I'm going to go down there and lie, make the other people lie, because that's what I do. And God said, all right, go do it. And that, that spirit should have. Here, here's what my sister said. Why would a spirit do that if it is going to produce good? In Tucker's case, this spirit attacked him, and look at his life now. He's much better. That was the change. He was dead, and then the spirit attacked him, and now he's alive. It should have been just the opposite. I don't know why the spirit attacked him. I don't know what the intentions of the spirit were except for this. The same intentions as we got right here. This spirit is evil, and all it cares about is acting out its nature. It can only act in accordance with his nature. It doesn't care what's going on. It doesn't know what's going to happen. It doesn't know how God's going to use them. It doesn't know what good this will produce in the future. All, all he knows is that the leash that he has, that God is holding, has been let loose. He's like, please let me go down there. Let me go lie. Let me go make them lie. Please, that's what I do. That's, that's what I've chosen to do. I've rejected you. And I've rejected your ways, but I'm still up here doing things because you still have me on your counsel for right now until judgment day. So I, you're still using these evil spirits. So please let me do what I do. God said, fine, here, let me let the leash. Let me, let me take that leash and let it loose a little bit and let you go do what you say you're going to do because that's your nature. And I can use you in that way. God can use evil in that way. He is not the... He is not the genesis of evil. He doesn't start the evil. He allows for it and says, well, we've got an evil world. Everything's fallen. And I I need to work in it. I need to change it. I need to make it better. I need to enact my plan. How do I do that? He doesn't have anything but evil to use. I bet you most of that divine counsel, there's, there's half of them there that are the evil ones saying, let me go do something evil. I don't understand the dynamics. All I'm doing is trying to give you a glimpse into how easily this fits within our worldview. God says, go, you will be successful. He sends, he, he's, let's, let's say in this case, uh, some evil spirit, he's talking about Tucker. God's saying, what do you think of my servant Tucker? They're saying, well, let me tell you something. If I scared him to death, I guarantee he would, he would keep on going away from you. Again, I don't know the dynamics. All I know is these are glimpses. Job gives us the same glimpse. What do you think of my servant? And God says, all right, go try. Because what I'm going to do, what God has in his mind, what the, the, the sovereign plan that he has, what he's going to pull off in all these things that go on on this earth is absolutely amazing. Because it is his plan, and it's going to be exactly what he needs with you. That evil spirit had no clue whether Chuck Tucker's called and elect or not. He has no idea. All he knows is that he thinks he can go down there and scare the bejesus literally out of Tucker. So that Tucker, maybe Tucker was starting to come to God, right? And he's starting to think about reading his Bible. He said suddenly afterwards he had an intense feeling to read his bible he needed to maybe that was already coming up or maybe that was in god's plan and this evil demon comes up and says hey let me do something before you do that let me go try to scare him to death i don't know what the evil plan of these spirits are i don't know why they would do something i don't even know why they're rebelling i really don't but look at us why are we rebelling because it's our nature we just act out our nature and here you have a situation where God allows an evil spirit to go, and this is what happened, whatever whatever the close. If an evil spirit did attack Tucker, God allowed that evil spirit to go attack him because he's going to bring about some good. That's what I see happening. If it's not, if Tucker's imagination is pulling this off, if it's one of his dogs, it's still the same thing. It's still the exact same thing. God on his throne orchestrating to bring Tucker Tim, but I don't think genuine believers will be brought to God 
in a substantial way in some type of fake understanding of what happened because it will end up deceiving you. If Tucker later on in his life sees a video of himself, he's like, I forgot, I've got a ring camera. I can watch that video 20 years later. And he looks and it's just his dog. He says, God, my whole faith was built upon that. I don't think that's going to happen. Having said all that, th this is the way I see it. I think it's something that we look at and I look at him and I believe it. I don't put my faith in it. It's not, it's not something that I have to have happen. It just makes sense. It fits within my worldview. And I think it's pretty darn exciting. And I'm looking forward to seeing Tucker move slowly forward. He doesn't have to go too fast. But I like what he's doing now. Just read your Bible a couple times. That's what I tell him. Read just like you're doing. Read. You got any questions? Call me. I'll tell you the options. I know you don't trust anybody. That's why I'll tell you the options. I, I don't trust anybody either. Let's, I mean, he needs a couple of friends to come alongside him. I hope that assistant of his, that evangelical assistant, is that person. It probably is. Maybe he'll have other spiritual experiences. Maybe all of a sudden this veil has thinned for Tucker, and I'll be jealous of him because I'd like for the veil to thin a little bit. Now, I'm kind of scared for it to do, to do that, but... <laughs> Uh, but anyway, guys, thank you so much. Don't forget, go to my Patreon, become a supporter, and we will see you next time. Have a great weekend. Theology 